Your core part of your workflows will be handling the data that you've retrieved from various locations. Our core helpers over on the Connect Library on the left hand side will start to provide you with options that you can use to start building up the flow of your tray workflow. Now there's a couple of key ones that we'll focus on during this video, but there is a whole host of additional ones that can help start adding structure into your workflow so that you can incorporate things like the business logic with the data that you're retrieving from the various services that you might be connecting with. To start off with, let's start with the Boolean connector. I can drag and drop that onto my workflow and you'll notice this now starts to allow me to actually branch out my workflow based on whether it's something is true or false. So effectively allowing us to do conditional checks that we might want to do. Over on the right hand side, the properties panel for the Boolean connector will have a couple of different options that I need to configure. The most important part will be this condition section, which is actually the comparison that we want to do to determine whether we will go down the true or false branch. So the first part is the first value that I want to check with. So in this case, what I'm actually interested in in this example is I want to be able to take any Salesforce opportunity that is closed one. So effectively is an is one state set to true. Taking a look at my logs, I can see that I did run my workflow initially with my Salesforce data, so I could just get a good visibility of the data that's coming through. And this is the field that I'm interested in that I want to use in my Boolean condition, which is checking to see is one is true or false. So what we can do is we can then click on the first value and again, using our connector snake that we covered in a previous video, I'm going to drag and drop that onto the Salesforce step and I'm going to select from the bottom is one. That will now be selected and I've now got to select the comparison type that I would like to perform. And this will be including your typical comparisons that you might see. So things like equal to, not equal to, smaller than, smaller than or equal to, greater than and so forth. So your typical comparison operators. You will also see some handy ones when you're dealing with lists. So if certain values are within a list or not within a list, as well as things like strings or basic string checking to see if it starts with, ends with, or contains. In this case though, I'm interested in equal to because I want to know if is one is equal to, in this case, true. And so I'm going to switch train actually the data type to Boolean so that I can switch that to true. And I now have my conditions set up for this Boolean condition where I'm checking is one is equal to true. If it's set to true, I'll go down the true branch. And if not, I'll go down the false branch. And this is how you can start to see based on what happens and what the values are, I can adjust what my tray workflow will be doing based on the values that I'm comparing within this Boolean condition. What you can also do with the Boolean condition or the Boolean connector is you can add multiple conditions on as well. At the very bottom, what you can then do is you can then change the strictness. So satisfy all conditions will work very similar to an AND condition where each condition will have to evaluate. Or alternatively, you've got satisfy any conditions, which will be very similar to an or comparison, where if any of the conditions are true, then it will be true as the output. So that gives you the option to have slightly more intricate conditional checks that you might want to do based on potentially multiple conditions as well. Mine is relatively straightforward though, so I can remove that second condition. I'm going to make sure that this is the one that I want to match with. I can now go ahead and run my tray workflow. And over on the left hand side with the logging section, I'm going to be able to see the Boolean condition will have its own step that I can click into. And we can see the comparison that was done in this circumstance. You can see that the value that was retrieved through from our call from Salesforce was false. We did the comparison type of three little equal signs, which is equal to, and then the value of true. Of course, that is not valid, so we get the branch name of false, which means we will go down the left side of this branch and execute any steps within the left portion of this. Now, this is a really good way for you to start seeing and using and adding that conditional logic into your tray workflow based on the data that you're getting from the various third-party services that you might be interacting with.